This infrared footage shows natural gas escaping from fossil fuel sites in the southern United States. Leaks like these are odorless and invisible to the naked eye, and they're heating up the planet. That's because natural gas is made up mostly of methane, which traps over 80 times more heat in the atmosphere than carbon dioxide over a 20-year period. Leaks are just one part of a big problem. Methane emissions from fossil fuels are even worse than previously thought, and reducing them is considered crucial to meeting climate targets. But there's good news. We know how to do it. So what's stopping us? Methane makes up around 17% of greenhouse gas emissions and is responsible for a quarter of the warming we're currently experiencing. But there's an important catch. It only stays in the atmosphere for about a decade versus centuries for carbon dioxide. And that provides an opportunity. If we reduce methane emissions, we can have a much bigger impact on the rate of warming in the near term. So it means if we can get some of these fast acting gases out of the atmosphere, it sort of buys us time to come up with a bigger solution for climate change. So where does all that methane come from? There are natural sources like wetlands, but the majority of emissions come from human activities, mostly these three. Methane from fossil fuels has the most potential for reduction. And since captured methane can be sold, most of the reduction measures would come at low or no cost, or even turn a profit. In 2020, global methane emissions from fossil fuels totaled about 72 megatons, which equates to a carbon footprint greater than Russia's. A lot of that methane came from leaks, known as fugitive emissions. In 2016, they were responsible for three times more emissions than air travel. Fixing these leaks is often as simple as turning a wrench or replacing a part. These are pretty low tech issues. The, the big challenge here is finding the leaks. Oil and gas companies have long relied on infrared cameras and handheld sensors to find leaks. That takes a lot of time. It's also pretty expensive. And that's why companies tend to check for leaks as sparingly as possible meaning they can go undetected for months. But leaks are far from the whole story. The majority of methane emissions from fossil fuels are deliberate for safety and pipeline maintenance, or as an unwanted byproduct of oil drilling, known as associated gas. Some of that methane is vented directly into the atmosphere, and much of the rest is burned or flared, which converts it into carbon dioxide and water vapor. However, many flares have been found to be faulty or inefficient, as seen here, allowing methane to escape. Not only are these emissions bad for the environment, they're a waste of money and resources. In the US, roughly $2 billion worth of natural gas is vented, flared, or leaked each year, enough to power 10 million homes. So what's stopping oil and gas companies from cutting their emissions? For one thing, they often lack the financial or regulatory incentive to cut their methane emissions further. Also, many oil wells aren't connected to a natural gas pipeline, since it's not their intended product. This leaves associated gas stranded on site with no pathway to market. But there's an even bigger challenge, bad data. Methane emissions are really difficult to measure and keep track of because of imprecise and expensive detection technologies. So a decade ago, when we started measuring methane emissions from oil and gas, there was no data. There were just insufficient data. So nobody really understood the problem. The industry has long relied on paper calculations to essentially guess how much methane they're emitting. And these guesses can be pretty far off. In 2018, more accurate surveys found methane emissions to be 60% higher than estimates by the Environmental Protection Agency. The EPA has actually since lowered their estimates, so they're even further off. Bad data has made it hard to design effective regulations, to combat leaks, and to hold companies accountable for their emissions. But things are looking up. Emerging technologies are beginning to provide better and more timely data about methane emissions, and the costs of these technologies are coming down. They include remote sensors that continuously monitor for leaks, and more precise aerial surveys using drones. Further up, satellites are scanning the Earth for methane emissions from larger sources and finding them all over the place. 
New and improved satellites are planned to launch in the coming years. So the ability to measure these emissions are orders of magnitude better than they were a decade ago. These technologies are opening doors to better regulation and a clearer picture of the patterns behind emissions. Once found, methods to prevent and reduce emissions are already well established. For example, gas can be captured instead of vented, leaky parts can be replaced, and consistent maintenance can keep the supply chain sealed. So the tools are available, and it's up to the oil and gas companies to use them, either voluntarily or under regulation. Many companies have committed to reducing their methane emissions, facing pressure from shareholders, customers, and the general public to clean up their act. Europe is talking about having a methane intensity standard for any natural gas that it imports. That, that's something that is making American suppliers pay attention. If you want to be able to sell your product, you better demonstrate, not on paper, but empirically, that you in fact have a clean product relative to someone else. Voluntary action is a good start, but it's likely not enough on its own. And that's where regulation comes in. There's no one-size-fits-all policy to keep methane emissions in check. Different countries, states, and provinces take different approaches to the problem. Regulators could require oil and gas companies to abide by certain practices, such as replacing leaky parts or collecting gas before maintenance rather than venting it. Oil wells could be required to plug into or build a natural gas pipeline to reduce venting and flaring. But this raises questions about who should pay for that pipeline. Regulation could also set a cap on emissions. But in order to hold companies accountable, regulators need to know how much methane they're emitting on a continuous basis, which requires better data. Finally, a price on methane, like a carbon tax, would incentivize oil and gas companies to reduce their emissions to avoid financial penalties. It will take time for energy grids to wean off of carbon-intensive fossil fuels, and the worst emitters, like coal, have to go first. In the meantime, stopgap solutions like natural gas have to be as clean as possible. But unlike many other climate issues, there's good reason for optimism. We already have the ability to address it. So I see every reason to be optimistic, but we need to be more vigilant and triple down on making sure it actually happens. And when we do that, we're hitting the brake on climate change to a degree we've never hit before. So can we do it? Absolutely. Will we do it? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs>